Welcome to Worked Examples in Accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. In this podcast, we're going to look at how to prepare the financial statement for a sole trader. Remember, a sole trader is a person who owns their own business and is distinct from, say, a partnership or a limited company. The preparation of financial statements always starts with obtaining the trial balance. So, where does the information for the trial balance come from? Well, the information comes from the accounts which are held in the general ledger. So you have to look up each account in the general ledger. And then you have to do something to each account before you can prepare the trial balance. And you should be aware of what you would need to do to each account. What you must do is to balance each account. And it's the balances from each account that are then entered to a trial balance sheet. So. Here's a typical trial balance sheet with sales, purchases, wedges, etc. You can see it's all laid out and on one side we've got debits and on the other side we have credits. So you need to take care to ensure that you enter the balance on the correct side, whether it's a debit or a credit. So we've now entered our balances from each of the accounts. So we have a trial balance and each side now has to be totaled and the two sides have got a balance so debits must equal credits because if you remember for every transaction when you enter a transaction the total of the debit should equal the total of credits so when we take the balances of all these accounts then total debit should equal total credits so you might like to check and add those up to make sure that that is in fact correct and you can see that what we've done is added them up those two figures are correct so they are the same so we have a balance and we can now proceed to construct the income statement the income statement is the first of the statements we're going to do so we're going to need a further piece of information we're going to need to know what value the opening stock was at the start of the year and it was 10,800 we're going to use this to prepare the income statement so construct the first part of the income statement that means get the gross profit gross profit is equal to the revenue minus the cost of the goods sold so the obvious question is well what's the cost of the goods sold how do we determine the cost of the goods sold the cost of the goods sold is equal to the opening stock plus the purchases minus the closing stock okay we've got the information we need we're now ready to start so we're going to start by taking the sales figure from this trial balance now we need the figures for the opening stock, the purchases, and the closing stock. And remember to determine the cost of sales. We're going to take opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. And now we've got the gross profit. We're, well, we're ready to get the gross profit because we can take sales less cost of sales. And there's our gross profit, 81,600. So, what do we do next? We've got to determine net profit, so we need to subtract the expenses. Okay, so what are the expenses and where are we going to get these from? Well, we get them from the trial balance. We add up the operating expenses. And if we take the operating expenses from the gross profit, we get the net profit. So we've now got a completed income statement for the period ended December the 31st. Now we've got a figure for the profit, then we are able to prepare a statement of the financial position. Now, and that statement is usually called the statement of financial position, but if you've got an older text, you may find it's still being called the balance sheet. So we start by looking at non-current assets, and we take the figures for these from the trial balance but note what we've got to do is take into account depreciation so we're going to take the cost less depreciation as the value to be used and we enter that onto our statement of financial position add those together we've got a value now for the non-current assets now we need to look at current assets and there are two current assets in that trial balance and those are receivables and cash so we need to fill in those values so there we are receivables was 15,000 cash was 9,400 so there we are we take those two and we have 24,400 of current assets 
So we add those two together and we have the total assets 89,400. So for the next part we're going to look for liabilities and the only liabilities that we can see on that sheet are the payables. Drawings are not, remember, a liability, but drawings are going to have an effect on capitals, so we're going to need the figure for capital and the figure for drawings in a minute. But first of all, we'll take that liability for payables, the 9,000. So we start with the current liabilities, then payables of 9,000. Now, I've brought in my capital, and I've brought in my net profit for the year, which I took from the income statement. I add my capital and my net profit for the year and my payables, and I get 121,400. Now I've got to subtract my drawings because they're going to reduce the capital. And I do that, and you can see I've got 89,400, and that balances with our total assets. This is only another way of expressing the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity. So there we are, we have a completed statement of financial position for a sole trader. That ends this short podcast, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors. You can find us at parkbenchtutors.com or you can look us up on Facebook. Thank you for watching and for listening.